Let's take a look at program development. Developing new programs is a challenging task, which involves considerable commitment and takes intensive planning. Your leadership is key to this process, stepping up to commit the time, talent, and resources to set the program development process in motion. First, the college should take time to understand the labor market need for the program. Labor market need must be based on the projected job openings and on the existing availability of training for the target job. It will be important to go beyond basic labor market information to validate the need by working directly with employers in the region. It is essential that this research include the specific skills and abilities that an effective training curriculum must provide. Again, validated with regional employers. Engaging employers early in the process builds the relationship that will be useful as the program develops. Nurturing these relationships at the CEO level is the foundation of future commitments to sustain the program. Developing and supporting the on-campus talent to carry out this research, planning, program development, and employer connections also takes the CEO to step up and set priorities and establish accountability for this work. Once need has been established, Fiscal viability of the new or expanded program must be assessed. That assessment involves both the initial cost and the sustaining cost. Initial costs include facilities, equipment, and program development. It is important to include the total cost of operation when planning initial investments. Facilities upkeep, equipment maintenance and replacement, and ongoing training needs. Other sustaining costs are salaries, supplies, and operations. Utilities, custodial administration, for example. Resources may be available through grants, facilities bonds, partnerships, or least attractive college operating funds. Sustaining revenues will be primarily FTES apportionment. The program must be a high enough priority to the college and to the community support what is usually a large initial investment. If the impact of the program is significant, it may be the decision of the college to initiate and continue the program even if FTES revenue is not projected to cover sustaining costs. CEO leadership is essential to step up the college's engagement in this priority setting and campus discussion early in the program development process. CEO leadership is also key to stepping in when alternative solutions may be needed or available. In some cases, an all-in development cost commitment may not be necessary, for example, the program may be offered in a leased facility. Equipment may be second generation, donated by industry. And faculty load can depend more heavily on adjunct faculty. Operating costs may be shared with employers, supporting incumbent workers to enroll, or by the Workforce Investment Board training agreements. Many such partnership arrangements are possible and all these creative solutions need CEO leadership. The complex structure of the Strong Workforce Program requires CEO oversight. So a word at this point on the use of Strong Workforce Program funds might be helpful. Although SWP funding is ongoing, use of this resource fiscally to sustain a CTE program locks that money into just that program for the foreseeable future. Doing this limits the development and startup funding from SWP so that supporting new and growing CTE programs is limited. In my opinion, 
SWP money is better used as developmental and startup money and then for sustaining money for only a limited time, likely to be three years spending horizon allowed for each year's SWP allocation. As CEO, you can set the expectation that new and expanded CTE programs will produce enough growth FTES in those three to sustain the program thereafter. This frees these dollars to be research and development funding for the next CTE priority. Once determining that it is feasible and desirable to offer a new program or expand an existing one, the college can turn to developing the appropriate course offerings and defining the program degrees and certificates. While this is primarily faculty work, the college will need to provide support to existing faculty or hire additional faculty to build and expand the targeted CTE programs. Finding faculty for technical programs is a particular challenge, especially in emerging fields. An ideal candidate has expertise in the subject matter, but has the instructional skills to transfer that knowledge to students. It is essential that the CTE faculty hires have spent time working in their respective industry if they are to be credible instructors. Salaries are an issue in hiring technical faculty, as often the pay level in any given technical field is significantly more than a community college instructional salary. While part-time instructors are an important resource, in my experience, it is important whenever possible for a program to be anchored by a full-time instructor. That full-time instructor can oversee the program needs and advocate for the resources and staffing needs, as well as shepherding the curriculum through the institutional processes. Finally, to realize the fruits of their investment, colleges must recruit students to fill the classrooms and generate the FTES that will sustain the program. Particularly in emerging occupations, it is important to educate the prospective students about an occupational area with which they may not be familiar. In addition to traditional tools such as social media, press releases, and open houses, specific outreach made through industry and business groups and professional organizations can be effective. With big picture campus efforts such as CTE student recruitment, CEO leadership can step up to coalesce college units such as marketing, instruction, and student services to work together to generate a unified message and outreach effort.